But we have to make sure that we are staying prepared. We have to make sure that we're staying on plan. We have to do our part. We have to make sure that whatever we are doing, we are doing it for the basic of the common good of our families. Whatever you are spending, you have to ask yourself, is this going to be for the common good of my family if something happens? Ask yourself that. What will this do for me? If I'm spending X for Y, what will it do for me? How will it make me? How will it protect me? How will it feed me? Will it help me get through the situation? These are all questions you have to be asking yourself at this point in time. Just because things are so expensive, folks. We're headed into an area that some people haven't even been through because they haven't even been around that long since 1981. I mean, they don't know what to do. They've never been through this. Maybe they read about it in some history books or maybe somebody might have taught them something in school or, you know, in a, a history class or a uh, economics class or something, if they were lucky enough to get one of those. But the point being here is you have to ask yourself these things. If you're buying something that's not food products that you can put away in store for a rainy day, and those rainy days, they're already here, folks. The flooding has begun. And when you don't, that little paycheck, you know, you think you're making 15 bucks an hour. You know, I'm doing really well. No, you're doing a lot better than where you were. Just imagine if the um, the rate that you were paid was based, what was going on right now was based before they started raising all the minimum wage payments throughout the, the country and everything. You know, people up to 15 bucks an hour. Just imagine if you were still making seven, eight, maybe $9 an hour and this hit. You want to see chaos? You want to talk about millions of people, about reality sinking in? It would have sunk in like that instantly because nobody would have been able to afford food, gas, anything. Forget housing. You would have had millions and millions of Americans flooding the streets because they have nowhere else to go. What are they going to do? Where are they going to go? They're working, but they were only making seven, eight, nine bucks an hour. At least now they're making 15. So that's a little bit better. You know, I don't know what it is in every state down here. It's 15 bucks an hour. So, but, you know, I mean, the point is, is the prices have gone up so high that even with them raising it to 15 bucks an hour, maybe this was part of the plan. Maybe that was part of the plan. We'll give them their raises. We'll raise them up to $15 an hour. And then we'll just raise everything. And we'll get all the money right back. Taxes are going to go up within a matter of a few years because all the tax breaks that we were given, those all have an expiration date, folks. So I don't think that, you know, these tax breaks and everything, they're going to have to start paying for some of this stuff. And you know where they're going to hit? The middle class are going to pay for it. I don't care what they say. I don't care anything else. You know, you hear them talk about, oh, well, you know, we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to make the, all the, the big companies pay for it and the corporations and the billionaires and everybody else and all this. And I want to see it on paper. I want to see it actually happen because technically speaking throughout history, Every time that there's ever been any type of taxes that have been raised, it's always on the middle class. The middle class has pulled this country for decades. It always has. It always will. The working class is the one that pays the most taxes so that the higher class can sit back and reap the most benefits. If you don't believe me, you didn't pay attention in school. You can Google it. You can do whatever you want. It's just the way it is. These big corporations and these big, huge businesses and businessmen and all this, 
they all have agendas and they all have the numbers of whoever they want in the White House and they have the cash flow to make sure that whatever it is that they want to get done and that they want to push through, that they want to back and everything else, that's what's going to happen. Because see, it no longer does, at least it seems like, now, I'm not going to speak for everybody in Washington, D.C., okay? There may be a few people that are left that are really good, that really care about the American people. You know, the thing that says right on the Constitution, we the people. But a lot of them, they're worried about who's lying in their pockets. And I have a problem with that. And everybody else should have a problem with that also, because when you turn around and you really think about what these people are doing to line their pockets and what they're doing to us American people, you and me, us, everybody out here watching, there's what, 1,417 people watching right now that I can see, all right, us, do you honestly think that that's fair we're getting screwed folks and we're getting screwed so hard they forgot to give us the vaseline because they couldn't afford it do you under all understand where i'm coming from if you understand where i'm coming from give me a number one do you understand where i'm coming from give me a number one that we're getting screwed the American people, we're getting screwed royally. And for what? For what? I haven't been able to figure that one out yet. And I've had people comment and everything else. Oh, you got to go, you know, look at this report and look at that report and do this and do that and everything else. And you know what? <laughs> I'm telling you right now. We're still getting screwed. And what doesn't make sense is it's being allowed. That's the bothersome part of this whole situation that we are dealing with. And the scary situation is it seems like whoever is in charge of this country because I'm not sure who is. Somebody doesn't care. Somebody has an agenda. I was taught when from a young little guy, always go with your gut feeling. Always stand, believe what you really believe and you feel it in your heart. Because your gut never lies to you. And I've bucked my gut a couple of times and I paid the price. <laughs> I learned the hard way. You know, when I was growing up, that's how you learned. You learned the hard way. Nowadays, everybody gets a trophy when they go and play a tournament. When I played basketball in high school, if we didn't win, you didn't get no trophy. You got a pat on the back from the coach and the coach said, you know what? We'll practice and we'll be better and we'll beat them next time. That's how we learned the hard way. Sometimes I wish there were certain things that we could go back and we could keep and bring into the future. And that is something that I wish that we could is actually people being taught that what you want out of life, you have to work for. It's not handed to you on a silver platter. You see, the older generation doesn't owe us, younger generation, anything. If anything, we owe the older generation a lot because they have taught us a lot throughout all the years for those who have paid attention. Now, by that, I mean, 
We all had grandparents. Maybe some of your grandparents went through the Great Depression. I know my Ned, they know a lot of stuff. I'd give anything for my grandparents to still be alive. I loved being around my grandparents. They live in Michigan. And I remember going up there and I'd be sitting on the back stoop with my grandma and my grandpa would bring a garden out of the garden, green beans and bring them up and set them down on the stoop. And we'd sit there and we'd snip green beans, me and my grandmother. And I remember that like it was yesterday. And I was probably, I don't know, seven years old. But it's things like that that instilled things inside of me of what I do and how I live my life. I learned how to earn my keep. You know, we always had a, a huge garden when I was growing up. Um, you had to go out, you'd have to do weed eating, you had to go out, you had to cut the grass, you'd have to, you know, weed the garden. Harvest time, you got to help pick. Then you got to clean the garden out. You got to till the garden, get it ready for winter. Um, the whole nine years, there's always work to be done. And then mom would be inside. She would can, you know, a bunch of the stuff. You know, she had all the canning stuff because that's how she survived as a kid. Because my grandparents, that's what they did. They canned everything. My grandmother used to make 10 loaves of bread a day. Didn't go to the store and buy it. Couldn't afford it. It's just the way the things are going. And what we have to do, we have to make sure that we are making a plan. We have to make sure that you are being the most critical of every cent that you are spending. You have to make sure that if you are making a budget, if you are making a plan, if you are making any of these type of things, you have to stick to it. It is so imperative at this point in time. I'm not no financial advisor or anything else. My wife takes care of all that kind of stuff, but I pay attention. I play dumb, but I play attention. I understand how things work. But see, that was also taught to us when we went to school. Whereas in nowadays, I think they're trying to actually bring some of that back, at least down here in the state of Florida. I know they were trying to bring back a lot more of the hands-on economics, um, all that type of stuff. So people and kids have a grasp of um, how to do a checkbook, how to balance a checkbook. Um, how to write a check. You wouldn't believe the people that I have to deal with that don't even know how to write a check. Not kidding you. And I'm talking not young folks. It's scary, folks. Except for out west. And it's dry as a bone. And everything is just drying up out there. Las Vegas has what less than like 49 days worth of water left because all the fires out there are contaminating all the water that has been stored in some of these smaller reservoirs and stuff outside the city. It's all been contaminated. Now, one has to ask themselves with everything else that's crazy going on in this world, what would be a logical question? Was that planned? Did somebody sabotage them? Did somebody deliberately set those fires? Who could it be? But nobody really asks any questions. We don't really have much solutions either. But that's the problem. Nowadays, the problem is we, the people, have lost the touch, the insight of where we've come from and where we are going. And where we are going at this point in time, folks, is a reality check. And what I mean by that, 
is you got to be asleep to believe it. Because it's nothing but a dream.